you. I did not know I was next. I wasn't prepared for this. Surprise! <laughs> Here we are. All right, I had a, uh, I had a pretty traumatic experience recently. Um, all guys will experience this at least once in their life if they haven't already, so this is like a, a serve as a warning for you. I had a, uh, an ingrown hair on my genitals. It happens, like we're used to it on your neck from shaving or your legs or something like that, but actually I had one down there, and when you see one down there, you immediately assume the worst. You're just like, oh, what is this, a little red, oh, wait, what the fuck is this? What is going on? And you're immediately, you're on WebMD, just like, what the fuck could this be? Like, what is chlamydia? I don't even know what the symptoms are for that. I don't know what's going on. Is, is it AIDS? Is my dick gonna look like Tom Hanks at the end of Philadelphia? I don't know what's going on with my penis right now. And you get scared. And like Yoda said, fear leads to anger, and then anger leads to hate. And you start compiling this list of all the women you've slept with recently. And if it's a long list, you usually get to like the one night stands, and you're like, oh man, I bet it was that redhead at the college party. She was blowing me up the three keystone lights. Of course she was filthy. I should have wrapped it up. What was I thinking? But if you have a short list, then it ends up being even worse, because then you've just got your, your serious relationships, and you still have their contact information for the most part. Like, I'm still friends with some of my exes on Facebook and shit. So you end up getting all bent out of shape. You don't calm down and figure it out. You just immediately send them like a really vicious email, just laying into them about how they gave you this disease. Then you find out it's just an ingrown hair, and you're like, oh, fuck, okay, I'm gonna be all right. But then they, they fucking call you or something. They're like, what's this message about? What are you saying to me? And you're like, you gotta explain yourself. Like, I, I have no idea what I was talking about. It was a bad problem. No, your vagina does not look like the Sarlacc pit, Return of the Jedi. I don't know where that came from. I was in a dark place. I had, I, your pussy doesn't smell like the trash cans at Knott's Berry Farm. I was just, I, I was in a dark place. I found an ingrown hair. I thought it was this STD, and you were the last girl I slept with. I'm sorry. Yes, I know we broke up nine months ago. You're still the last girl I slept. That's not the point. All I have to say, I'm sorry. And the, the worst part is, like, uh, like I said, I do have an ex on Facebook. I actually had a recent uh, tiff on there. She posted her status update as celebrating her one-year anniversary with her current boyfriend. And I was like, oh, good for them. That's fine. And I thought about it for a minute, and I was like, I was still living with her a year ago. <laughs> and so I, I did, what I should have done at that point was just shrugged it off. I'm like, well, it's a good thing we fucking broke up, because obviously she didn't love me very much. But instead what I did was what the stupid ex-boyfriend in like high school does, and I blasted her on Facebook. Like I just posted a status update, it was like, oh, we're just calling her out on it. And it led to a little bit of drama, some comments, some messages back and forth. And uh, the worst part, it, where the fuck am I? <laughs> The worst part is it's all on Facebook for everyone to see. That's what I hate about Facebook is there's like 12 different ways to contact somebody and only one of them is private. The other way you're just, you're commenting on status updates, you're commenting on someone else's comments, you're commenting on their photos, you're poking them. Then you can't talk to anyone personally. But the thing I hate most is the like button. If you guys have a Facebook, everyone's been on Facebook at least once, there's a button that says like. And if you like what someone had to say on their status update, you click it. But it doesn't apply to everything, although some people go fucking crazy with it, they just keep clicking like on everything. And that doesn't make sense. Like, if someone puts R.I.P. Grandma Judy, you'll be missed. And you're like, oh, like, wait, no, I don't, I don't like that she's dead. I, I like the idea of her finding heaven and peace. I should post a comment to explain my, oh, now it's just even more awkward. Fuck, I should delete that. No, because then they're going to think I took back what I said about Fuck, I, I just got to delete my account and tell everyone I got hacked again. Ugh. Didn't that happen last time when you told that gay kid you liked him for getting kicked out of his parents' house? Like, no, I, I like that he stood up to his parents. I didn't, I tried to post a comment to explain, ah, oh, never mind. They need like a condolences button for that, or like an agree button. So when someone bitches about the healthcare system or something, you're like, I don't like this either, but I'm, I'm, I agree with you in solidarity. Or what Facebook really needs is a who gives a shit button. Yeah. Because that's what 95% of the shit people post on Facebook is. And I do it too, but it's the most inane garbage. Like, oh, I just got some frozen yogurt, and I'm gonna go check out that new Jennifer Aniston movie. I'm like, I can't even afford frozen yogurt, fuck off. And nobody cares. Like, how wild is your Saturday night gonna get? Are you gonna go home, at, uh, stop at 7-Eleven, and fill up the tank with premium, because you're a rebel? Like, slow down, rock star. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, speaking of shitty movies, like Jennifer Aniston flicks re recently, uh, has anyone seen the Twilight movies? This Twilight saga, it's like a huge, raging so success. <laughs> I've never seen them, but I, I assume they're garbage because of the whole premise. But I will defend them because uh, the lead guy, Edward, is actually, uh, he's doing some things for other men. He, first of all, he brought the P code back, which I think is weird, because if you wore a P code before 2008, you looked fucking ridiculous. <laughs> but he also, he's doing like the pale, broody guy that doesn't want to do his hair. He's making that hot across the board. 
which is perfect for me. Because back in high school, this look got me nothing but like chubby goth girls with black and blue pigtails who just wanted to talk about their journal entries and shit. And they'd be like, oh, Josh, I, I feel at this point in the relationship, I'd like to share my poetry with you. And I'm like, nah, dial it down, American Beauty. I kind of just want to get some hand play. It's all right. If we go any further, you might actually get a really vicious email from me on Facebook, but it's probably just an ingrown hair, so you can forget about that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, that's all for me for tonight. You guys have a good one. I'm Josh. Nice job, Josh. And you can keep.